Johanna Bormann, SS Nazi concentration camp guard. She was born on 10 September 1893 in Birkenfelde, German Empire. Not much is known about her life. She was unmarried, worked in lunatic asylum. Her job was to take care of sick people there and was paid 15 to 20 marks a month. On 1st March 1938, at the age of 45, Bormann joined the auxiliary SS as a civilian employee to earn more money and was paid 150 to 190 marks per month by the SS. She first worked as a kitchen assistant at the Lichtenburg concentration camp in Saxony from 1938 until May 1939. The Lichtenburg camp was closed in May 1939 when the new Ravensbrück concentration camp for women was opened near Berlin, replacing Lichtenburg as the main camp for women prisoners. Prisoners from the Lichtenburg camp were moved to the new Ravensbrück women's camp. She assigned to oversee the staff at the new Ravensbrück camp, where she worked in the kitchen for a year, then on the outside commandos for a year, and then on Obergruppenführer Pearl's estate. In March 1942, Bormann was transferred to Auschwitz, Poland, as an Aufseherin. She worked for three weeks on the commando, which went outside the camp, called Commando Babets, and then took up duties inside the camp at Auschwitz-Birkenau until the end of December 1943. Her superiors at Auschwitz included Maria Mendel, Margot Dreskel, and Irma Gries. After that, Bormann was moved to Buddy, a nearby subcamp. She was known for her brutality, abusing and beating prisoners. She had a large dog, big wolfhound, German shepherd, that she used to set on helpless prisoners. Camp prisoners called her Weasel and the woman with the dogs. Helena Koper testified that Johanna Bormann was the worst hated person in the camp. She always had with her a big dog, which she sat on to the prisoners. Bormann found some cigarettes and photographs on my bed. For this, she beat me on the face with her hand and then set her dog onto me. I was beaten in the left arm near the elbow. Bormann took me to the hospital and I was there for six weeks. I believe Bormann called the dog off only because she was a sadist and enjoyed doing that sort of thing. Once Bormann approached a female prisoner, took something out of her pocket, then grabbed her by the hair and threw her to the ground, and that while she was lying on the ground. She let the dog go and bite the women severely. There was no movement from the body. Four prisoners were instructed to take the body away on a stretcher to block 25. That is the block to which prisoners were taken when they were dying or when were lodged prior to being taken to the guest chamber. Dora Silberberg testified about the cruelty of Bormann that one of her friends had been too sick and weakened to go to work. When Bormann saw that girl was sitting down, she approached her and snarled her to go to work. She was too sick to even respond. I tried to explain Bormann that her friend could not work because of severe pain and being very ill. Bormann looked at me and suddenly hit me straight in the face, knocking out two of my teeth. She yelled at me that I had to go back to work. She then ordered the dog to attack the girl who was sitting on the ground. The beast took her by the legs in his mouth and dragged her around the entire workshop until she lost consciousness. The girl was taken to the hospital. The next day I learned from a guard that the girl was dead. In 1944, Bormann was transferred to the auxiliary camp at Hindenburg in Silesia, and in January 1945 she returned to Ravensbrück. 
Her last transfer took place in March at the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, where she served under the camp commandant Josef Kramer. In the last weeks of the war, thousands of new prisoners arrived at Bergen-Belsen, as the Nazi Germans continued to evacuate camps that were soon to be liberated by the Allied forces. Overcrowding, food shortages, and poor sanitation caused outbreaks of typhus and other disease. As a result, hundreds of prisoners died every day in the Belsen camp. On 15th April 1945, the Bergen-Belsen camp was liberated by Allied forces. Allied soldiers found 60,000 prisoners inside, most of them severely ill and starving, and over 13,000 unburied bodies lying around the camp. The British Army forced to the former SS camp staff to bury thousands of bodies in mass graves. Johanna Bormann, along with 44 other camp staff, were arrested by British Army and tried in the Belsen trial by a British military court at Lüneburg. She was charged with crimes committed at Auschwitz and Belsen. At her trial, Bormann said she had joined the SS to earn more money. She wanted to leave the SS and had sent the letter to officer but received it back with the notice that permission was not granted. She pleaded not guilty to all charges. Bormann was convicted of war crimes both at Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen and was sentenced to death. The night before her execution, Johanna Bormann and Irma Gries sang Nazi songs until the early hours of the morning. She was hanged at Hamelin Prison by Albert Pierpoint on 13th December 1945 at the age of 52. Her executioner, Albert Pierpoint, later wrote, She limped down the corridor, looking old and haggard. She was 42 years old, standing only a little over 5 feet. She was trembling as she was put on the scale. In German, she said, I have my feelings. Bormann and other Belsen camp staff were buried in the Hamelin prison ground. In 1954, they were all reburied in Hamelin's Amwil Cemetery and marked with iron crosses. This place became a spot for neo-Nazis' visit. So in 1986, all the iron crosses were removed and now there is grass field without markers. <laughs>